I want to be able to liven up my spreadsheet just a bit by either drawing some lines, boxes, squares, or adding clip art, or a fancy way of saying pictures available for Microsoft. To do so, I need to bring up my drawing toolbar. You can see down at the bottom I already have it, but if you don't have it, you can always go to the top and right-click on any button that you see here, and you can see I'm right-clicking, and then go down and left-click on drawing. Now because it's already up, if I left-click, it disappears. So I can right-click again and go down to drawing and it reappears. First thing we're going to do is insert some clip art. And when I hover over this picture here, the picture of a dude, you can see that it says insert clip art. I left click on it, it pulls up the task pane over to the right. You can see my last search was for a witch and I'm looking for some Halloween pictures. So I can highlight it, hit the backspace arrow on my keyboard, and let's type in ghost. Now before I click go, do I want to look on the web or just on my computer? If you don't have internet connection or it's pretty slow, you do want to probably change the options to look on your computer, although the problem with that is is that when you install Microsoft Excel or Word or any of the Office programs, it doesn't come with a lot of clip art. Click on the drop down arrow and you can see that right now I have my web collections unchecked. So I can't look on Microsoft server to see all the clip art. All I can do now is look through my collections of whatever Office has given me. So if I go ahead and click Go, it says no results were found. But if I change that and I check Web Collections, well first of all, you see that little plus sign? When I click on it, it expands the subcategories and you can see none of these categories are checked. Well, I could go through there and check which one I want. Or better yet, if I want to search through all of them and not waste my time checking the boxes, just click on this check again. So you click it once to remove it, click it once to add it, and then click it again, and it checks everything. So it's including all subcategories. So when you see it cascading like that, it means everything. So I click off in a blank area, then I can go ahead and click go. It's searching the web now, and it pulls up some pictures, and it pulls them up by twos. So if I click and scroll down, it goes to the next two, scroll down the next two. I find out whatever one I want, and I can do a couple of things. I can either hover over it, in which case it brings up this little drop down arrow, and I can click on it, and it gives me a menu to choose to insert or to copy it and paste it on another spreadsheet. Or I can click off in a blank area here, and I can, when in doubt, right click, and it brings me the same menu. Or I can just simply click right in the middle of it, and it adds my clip art. Very nice. Let's do another one. I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to left click on this one as well and it inserts the clip art. When I'm finished, I can close out of this task pane so it can give me a little bit more room, and then I can click and drag my clip art around. Now there's quite a few things you can do with these pictures. For example, let's say the picture is not big enough, or maybe it's too small. You see these little handles around it? You can click and drag one of those handles to drag it proportionally if you do it from the corner, and it enlarges it. Or to stretch it out, you can click and drag the handle from the side so it looks a little bit more oblong. And then I can click on my undo button up here to go back to its original size, a couple of clicks. Also, you have this green little handle, and you see that my pointer is turned into an arrow. Once I hover over it, it shows me that I'm over that green circle. And then once I click on it, it turns it from that little arrow into four little arrows. Which means after I hold my mouse button down, I can now go left, or I can move my mouse right, and it rotates. And then, of course, I can click undo to move it back to its original position. Let's say, for example, I want this clip art. I'll click and drag it. And you see how I'm clicking and dragging it? I'm moving my mouse over the picture itself and then clicking my left mouse and dragging it. Now, what if I want the picture that's behind it in front of this picture here? Well, you can see I still have it selected with these little circles here. And in fact, if I hit the Tab key, it tabs to the next available picture in the spreadsheet. And I hit Tab again, Tab, Tab. So if you ever get stuck and you can't select the object behind it, always use your tab key once you're able to select at least one object. So I'll hit tab again, and you can see it's this picture behind it. All I have to do is right-click on the picture, go to the order of things, and say that I would like this picture that I right-clicked on, I want to bring it to the front. Now it's in front of the ghost, so it looks really nice, a 3D type of a picture. And then click off in a blank area to see what it really looks like. Now if I want to make some changes to my pictures, for example, I want to cut off the picture, maybe the bats, maybe the top of the ghost's head, I can do that. It's called cropping, and to do so I want to bring up the picture toolbar. Now to bring up any toolbar, like I said before, you can right click on any one of these buttons up at the top, and then go down and left click on picture. Here's the picture toolbar. All I have to do now is click on one of the pictures, and then once I click on it, it highlights all the buttons that are available for the picture, 
and then I can hover over the crop button and click on it once and you can see it changes the bore of the picture into lines that I can click and drag to move in to cut off some of the picture. For example, I didn't want the top part so I can hover over this line, click and drag and move it in and it cuts off the ghost's head. I don't want the bats so if I click and drag from the left handle and move in, well it cuts off a good part of the bat and then of course I can do it from up and left here to try to really get rid of the bat but then it cuts off everything else. Of course I can always click on my undo arrow to get it back to the way I like it. One other thing is that if you want the original picture brought back even after you cropped it and you don't have the undo to undo it, you can always double click on the picture and you can see that the top is already cropped by 0.15. Well if I set it back to zero type in zero and then click OK, it automatically restores the picture. I'm still in crop mode because it's got the handles to the sides and the top. To get out of it, I can either click on this button again and it removes it, or hit the escape key on the keyboard and it gets rid of those handles. You also can change the picture's, well, color of it by clicking on the arrow and say you want it in gray, or maybe you want it as a washout because this is something you're going to be using as part of a backdrop, maybe as a watermark. So again, I can right click here after I changed it to a washout and go to order and say I want to send it to the back. So now it's behind here and it gives us that nice 3D image look. A couple of other things that you can do on the toolbar. Again, highlight your object. You can change the contrast or the brightness, even flip it or rotate it by 90 degrees. And if you click it twice, then you did a full 180. You can also add a line style to it by saying you want three quarters and it gives it a nice little picture box and then I can click and drag that green handle around to bring it back up to the top and click off in a blank area and now it looks like I actually have a nice frame around it and then when I'm finished be sure to save your work. Also on the drawing toolbar you can add shapes draw your own shapes for example the most simplistic is the line so when I click on it once I can move my pointer again over the spreadsheet and click and drag, and there's my line. I haven't let go of the mouse yet because I want to show you that if I don't let go, I can kind of get my line straight. And what is really helpful is you can hold down the shift key and it'll automatically put your line straight. Now if I hold down the shift key and move my mouse down, it'll do it at about 15 degrees here, the angles, and it'll help me get a straight line. So I let go of the mouse, I got a perfect straight line. I can also color the line, make the line thicker. First, let's color it. You can see there's my line brush, so if I click to the right of it, I can select a color, maybe something like red. I can also add thickness to it with my line style by clicking on it and selecting maybe three point, so it's a little bit thicker. Or, if I need something even more so, then click on the more lines. And then type in your own, maybe something like 25, width, and then clicking OK and it gets really thick. In addition to this, I can also say I'd like an arrow either at the top or the bottom of my line by clicking on the arrow styles. You can see the default is a simple line here, but I can go ahead and select an arrow style that's pointing up, or click on it and have it point down. Also, I can click and drag these little handles here and stretch my arrow around, either longer or shorter. And of course, you can always undo it until you get it back to the way you originally had it. It's the same thing when you want to draw rectangles or ovals. And the reason why I call them rectangles and ovals is because down at the bottom, that's all you have. Well, how do I draw a square? Go ahead and click on it once, your rectangle, and then move your mouse and click and drag. Now, if I keep going to the right, it's rectangle, of course. If I try to eyeball it, it's really hard getting that proportion of a square, that perfect proportion, unless I hold down the shift key and it automatically pops into a square for me. Holding down the shift key and clicking and dragging, you can see I can find the perfect proportion for a square, and then when I'm done, I let go of the mouse. Same with the oval. Click on the oval, and then click and drag out on your spreadsheet and then hold down the shift key without it with the shift key and then let go and it adds that perfect circle. You can add colors to these by simply making sure that I'm selected with the handles around it and then going down and kicking the bucket here, the little arrow to the right of it and selecting red of course. You can kick it up a notch and get even fancier by clicking the arrow to the right of it and going to fill effects. Now you can do gradients, and you can see the gradients down here look really nice. So it's dealing with red, but if I want to choose my own two colors, I'll select two colors. And then my second color could be something like maybe a, a nice blue. And then I can either choose it either going horizontal, so the red's up at the top and the blue's down at the bottom, or blue's up at the top, and I can click on here. Or maybe I want it, say, diagonal, so the red's in the left-hand corner. 
I'll go ahead and left click on that and then click OK and you can see how nice it looks. Now it still has a black line around it. If I don't want a line around it, again I want to go back to my line brush, click on the arrow to the right of it and say I don't want a line. It gets rid of the line so now I'm just dealing with a, a circle that has no border around it. Again I can come back to my circle. I can go down and kick the bucket here and go to fill effects. I also have additional options like texture. So maybe I can get something like marble. A pattern, which doesn't look too good. And then, or a picture. And I can select a picture by clicking on the select button. And then I have to look through my computer and either go to my desktop by clicking on the desktop button or clicking on the drop down arrow here and choosing a place to find it. In any case, I'll go ahead and double click on the pictures here. I'll find one and then double click on it and then click OK and there's my little sunset within the circle. You can see that when I click off the picture, the picture toolbar disappears. When I click back on the picture, it brings it up. Now if you close out of the picture toolbar and click off and then click on, it's not going to happen because you just basically said, look, I no longer need you and care for you and then it gets angry and it never comes back. Well, what you can do instead is remember when in doubt, always right click up at the top and then go down to the picture toolbar and it will come back. For a final demonstration of the toolbar, I want to create a dartboard, basically made out of wood with some circles in the middle, a bullseye, and some arrows pointing right at it, and then maybe some callouts, or what they call callouts. If you remember in your, your Sunday cartoons, those little cartoons they have, the characters are speaking something that's little, in a little bubble, that's called a callout. So to show you the power of what you can do with the drawing toolbar, I'm going to start with by clicking on the rectangle here, and then holding down the shift key. I'm going to click and drag my dartboard and then let go of the mouse. Now this is white and I want it to look like wood. So there's a couple things I can do. Go down and kick on the bucket here and choose fill effects or when in doubt you can right click and go to format the auto shape. If you select format you can still go to the colors and lines tab and click on the drop down arrow and choose fill effects. In other words, I'm trying to show you that there's many ways to do the same thing, or many different ways to go about doing it. Find the one that's easiest for you. So maybe I don't want to right click on here, but come down here, choose Fill Effects. I want Texture, and I want to look for some wood here, so I'll scroll all the way down to the bottom. Oak looks really nice, so I'll go ahead and click OK. Next thing I want to do is I want to add some circles in the center of this, and I want them layered one on top of another, each one getting smaller as I go. So I want to add more than just one circle. I'm going to click off in a blank area, go down. When I click on the oval, I can only draw one circle at a time. So let me hit my escape key so it gets rid of this. If I double click really fast, this will stay up there and I can draw as many circles as I want until the cows come home and it never stops until I hit escape or I click on the button again to get rid of it. So let me undo those. Let me double click on the oval. I'm going to start in the upper left hand corner here where my cross is at, hold down the shift key and click and drag my circle so it fits fairly snug within the uh, square here and then it doesn't have to be perfect, I'll, I'll show you how to align them a little bit later. Let go of the mouse, hold down the shift key, click and drag in the same direction, same corner, but maybe just a little bit smaller and I'll keep doing that, upper left hand corner, hold down the shift, click and drag until I keep getting smaller with my circles shift drag. Okay that looks pretty good. Now I need to stop drawing circles so I'll click on the oval again so it's not highlighted. Next thing I want to do is I want to align these all up in the center. Now instead of eyeballing it and clicking and dragging it and going oh, I think that's about right, well that's center. I'm going to click undo a couple of times. I'm going to let Microsoft align them for me. First by um, horizontally and then vertically. So to do that, um, you can see the first circle is selected. I'm going to hold down the shift key and I want to select and click on each circle and even the, the dartboard behind it until you can see all these handles which tells me I've got everything selected. Now once I have them all selected, I want to say Microsoft look. Go ahead and line everything off of each other so they're all centered. To do that, you can see where the draw button is. Click on it. Go to align or distribute and say the first thing is I want to line everything in the center. Excellent. Now I want to go back to draw and go up to align or distribute and then I want to align everything in the middle. So first in the center, now in the middle, click off in a blank area. That looks terrific. Now to add a bit of color to it. Click on the outer circle first, skip the next circle, hold down the shift key and click on the third circle, 
Skip the next circle, hold down the shift key and click on the inner circle. So now I have handles on the outer circle, uh, looks like the second or third circle, as near as I can tell. And then what I want to do is come down in here and kick the bucket and then go to fill effects. I want two colors. I'll choose my famous red and let's do the second color as a blue. And this one I want to do from the center. So let's say I want red in the center coming out with blue and then click OK. Mm, doesn't look too bad. And actually it looks like I didn't select the circle so maybe I can go ahead and click undo and then select the right circles but for now I'll say that's alright. I'll click off in a blank area. I'll select my outer circle and I hope I selected that. Hold down the shift key and select the next to the inner circle and do another color. So click on the bucket, go to fill effects, do two colors, maybe the same thing red and let's do blue again only this time when it's coming from the center let's do it just the opposite red on the outside so I'll select this option here and click OK okay that's like really burning my eyes and probably yours too so let's hurry and take care of this I'm gonna click off in a blank area here next I wanna add a star right in the center so I'm gonna click on the auto shapes here the button down on the drawing toolbar and go up to basic shapes and see if I can find any stars. If there's none there, some under the basic shapes, we do have stars and banners. And let's do this star right here. I'm going to click on it once. It turns my pointer into a black little cross. I'm going to start in the upper left hand corner. I'm going to click and drag and you can see my stars getting disproportional, but if I hold the shift key down, it gets nice and proportional. I'm going to drag it just a little bit off and then let go of my mouse. And then it's the same concept. If I want to line this star, in the center of that circle. I want to hold down my shift key so both the circle and the star are selected and then go back to my draw and then align or distribute first in the center then back to align or distribute to the middle and then click off in a blank area looks good. Select my star make it yellow by clicking on it then I can add a few arrows like they're hitting the target so I can go ahead and click on the arrow button and then click and drag from the center and go out for my first arrow. Okay, there's a problem. My arrow's pointing outwards and I want to point it inwards. Well, I can go down to the arrow style button, click on it and say change directions. Also, I want to add some thickness to it. So I go to my line style and say make it thicker. Also, I want two arrows. So here's a trick. Well, there's a couple ways of doing this. You can hold down the control key and hit the letter D key for duplicate and it creates the same one and I'll undo that. Or you can hold down the control key and then hover over the line and as I hold the control key you see that little plus sign next to the pointer? Click and drag and then let go of the mouse first and then the control key second and you can see I've got a copy of it. So control click and drag will give you duplicates as well. I'll grab the tail end, swing it around and then click and drag the center of the arrow and push it up in kinda tight there. And then maybe I want to add a little call out or a little cartoon box that says way to be on target. To do that, I'll click on Auto Shapes. I'll go to Callouts. I'll select a rounded rectangle callout. Same thing. Click in the upper left hand corner and drag down into the right. And let's drag it down. Let's say I really missed my mark. And then you can see I can start typing in. And then click off in a blank area when I'm done. Now if I want to resize this I can click on it once and then click those arrows and drag them in and you can see how disproportional that's going to be because this little guy is stretching out far. You can click on that little yellow handle and drag it in and pull it over however you want and then click off again. Now if I want to move this either up or down, if you click on it once then click to drag it, it's not going to move it, it's going to stretch it. So I'm going to do, undo that by clicking my undo arrow. Here's the trick. Click off of it once. When you click on it once, don't let go of the mouse. Hold down the mouse and drag. And then you don't get that in stretching. Unless, of course, that's what you want to do. So click off, click on it once, hold down the mouse, and then drag. You can add colors to these callouts as well. You can, when in doubt, right click on the fuzzy border, go to the format option, select your color arrow, and go down to fill effects and you can get your two colors. Maybe we can make it a silver gray and then go ahead and click OK. We'll just leave the defaults there and click OK. Then I can create other little callouts that tie to this one down below as well. Now if I want to move this, the only problem is is that if I click and drag, I only move one piece of it and that's very annoying. So I'll go ahead and click undo. Instead I want to select everything. So I'll hold down the shift key after I select my first object then I hold shift and I start selecting all the other objects and try to keep track of all the objects you need to select here. When you're done selecting them all, go to the draw 
button and select group it groups everything together so you can click and drag and stretch it over very nice and you can also cut it scroll down a few rows here and then control V as in Victor to paste it control X was the shortcut key for cutting it hey thanks for watching if you like my video please give it a thumbs up and if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, as soon as I upload a new video, you'll be notified instantly. And you can do that by coming over here and clicking on my face. You can also click here to support me. So for $2 a month, you can have access to over 2,700 training videos, all ad-free. And for a few bucks more, you can have access to my exercises, instructor notes, quizzes, certificate of completion, and a whole lot more.